So we did this the other day. Ready? And if Christ has not been risen and raised, then our preaching, preaching, preaching is in vain. And your faith is also in vain. We talked about that. Yep. Importance of the resurrection of Jesus. And then last time we learned this. Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Yes. And that we learned, hey, you can rejoice in the Lord all the time, even if you're not happy. Even if you're crying, even if you're hurting, you can still rejoice in the Lord. Talk about that. Here's today's verse. This is something God spoke directly to Joshua, but it's in the word of God for all of us. We'll talk about the setting here in just a minute. Let's go ahead and look at the verse first. Some of you may have memorized this. It's a great verse for memorizing. Have not I commanded you? I've got this in King James, so it's in Shakespeare in English. But you, have not I commanded you? Be something. God commanded no, saves a good guess. That's not it. B, here's the deal. How many of you know uh, the song, Jesus Loves Me? You know the song? You remember how it goes? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I was about to give some more hint. Be strong. And that's not in yourself. It's in him. We are weak. He is strong. But we can be strong in him. Be strong and of a good not Christian. It means it means kind of like this. It means pretty much the same as brave, courageous. courageous. Be strong, be strong, and have a good courage. Be strong, and have a good courage. All right. Now he says, "Don't do this. Don't be afraid." Very good. Neither be, and this rem, this rhymes with afraid. With afraid. Be, it sounds like afraid or starts with a D. And it means really overwhelmed, feeling like, oh, no, there's no point in continuing. I might as well quit. Uh, no, it rhymes with afraid. It may be a word you're not familiar with, though. D I. No, D I S. D I S M. Remember, it rhymes with afraid. Dismayed. Is that a word you're familiar with? Dismayed. Don't be afraid, neither be dismayed. This is why. For the Lord your God is with you. Just think about place and distance here. Where? Where? Or wherever, actually. Wherever you go. Wherever you go. King James says, whithersoever. <laughs> we don't use that word anymore, do we? That's Shakespearean English, whithersoever. Thou goest. Now, guys, this is a powerful verse. Let me just talk about it. I'll try to be quick, but Moses had been the great leader of Israel. God raised him up to lead them out of slavery into Egypt, from Egypt, through the desert, across the Red Sea, dried up the Red Sea. Moses, you know, lifted the rod and God dried up the Red Sea. Moses took them out of Egypt. They wandered 40 years in the wilderness because the generation had to die because it had been rebellious against God. Their kids would go into the promised land. Then Moses, so, so, and he's the one God called up on Mount Sinai and said, these are my Ten Commandments. He wrote him, Moses came down with the tablets of the law. And then he also said, by the way, Moses, here's the way you're going to build my tabernacle. He gave him the pattern for the tabernacle. You with me, Trey? Uh, so so, uh, so, so he, 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 Moses taught the people how to do that. Moses is the one that interceded for the people, prayed to God. When God had something to tell them, he spoke to Moses. When it was time for them to leave, Moses led them away. Now, Moses wasn't a perfect man, and he messed up. Right before they went to the promised land, God said, Moses, speak to that rock, and I'm going to send water to the people through the rock. And Moses disobeyed God. He, he was angry, so he whacked the rock instead of speaking to the rock. And God said, Moses, i got to make an example out of you. You can't disobey me like that and just get, I've got to make an example. So Moses, you can't go into the promised land. You can go up to it. You can look over the mountain at it, but you can't go in. So, so God wouldn't let Moses go in. Now, Moses was 120 years old when he died, so it's not like he hadn't had a long life. But, but Joshua was going to be the one to lead him in. So after Moses died, God said, okay, Joshua, you're, you're my guy. You're the guy that's going to lead him at this point. Now, guys, if you've been in Joshua's place, you'd probably said, I can't do this. I can't replace Moses. Nobody can replace Moses. Lord, don't make me do this. God said, no, you're my guy. But this is when God said this. 
You can be strong, Joshua. You can be of good courage. You can be courageous. You can be brave. You don't have to be afraid. And don't be dismayed because I'm with you. I'm not going to leave you. Wherever you go, I'm going to be right there with you. So just like I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. Now, guys, that's, that's true for you, too. This is a great verse to memorize. Um, I had two of my grandkids who really sadly lost their dad. I, uh, one of our sons, Jeremy, uh, got in trouble when he was younger. They had to come live with us. He went, got in trouble with the law, made some really bad mistakes, sinned against God, got in trouble with the law. And, and, our, and his, his children came to live with us for a year. And then later on, uh, he got addicted to alcohol. We thought he'd quit drinking, but he had not. He eventually drunk himself to death. He got cirrhosis of the liver and died at 35 years of age. His kids were still teenagers. And, and at, their, at his funeral, I talked about this verse with the, with, with the grandkids because they'd already memorized it. When they were with us that year that they stayed with us, they memorized this verse. And they still use this verse as part of an important part of their lives. Uh, and it's really important, guys. Things will go. They, they didn't feel like they could be any worse off at that point. Their daddy was dead. They were still young. They were, didn't know what they were going to do. They didn't know for sure where they were going to live. They didn't know how, what was going to happen. And, and, and I said, there are going to be times when you're lying in your bed looking at the ceiling, wondering what's going on, what am I going to do, and you're going to be crying. You need to remember this verse. God says, I'm with you wherever you go. Don't be afraid. Be strong. Be a good courage. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Yes, you're grieving. Yes, you're hurting. Nothing wrong with crying. But just remember, I'm not leaving you, God says. And, and this verse is very powerful. It'll help you too. God will use it to strengthen you. So let's see if we can memorize it. Have not I commanded you? Have not I commanded you? Have not I commanded you? Be strong, be strong, be strong. Be strong and of a good courage and of a good courage and of a good courage. Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. That rhymes. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you. This is why you don't have to be afraid or dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you. The Lord your God is with you. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Wherever you go. Not I commanded you. Be strong. And have good courage. Then he says, don't do something not to be. Be not. Mm -hmm. Be not afraid. Nor neither be dismayed. Why? For the Lord. Your, for the Lord your God. Is with you. Remember how it ended? Sort of. Yeah. He's talking about a place, though. Whatever, yeah, everywhere you go, wherever you go. There you go. All right. Awesome verse, guys. Memorize it. Guys, let me tell you one more thing about memorizing verses. I would encourage all of you to start memorizing some scriptures and come and quote them to me. It'll help you in your math because you can memorize your math better, too, if you memorize verses. Memorize, memorize, memorize. But let me tell you something. If you memorize a verse like this and you quote it to me, that's great. It's a good thing. But it's real easy to lose it. But if you don't keep saying it in a few days, it'll be gone. Maybe the same day. You know, you forget it. Same thing with math. You know, you just forget things real quickly. So you memorize it and you forget it. What you need to do is rememorize it. Second time will be easier. You'll probably forget it again. Rememorize it again. It'll be even easier. You may forget it again. But but if you'll finally get to the place, if you keep rememorizing it, we won't have to memorize it anymore. It'll be a part of you forever. Some of you have already done that for some verses. Some of you could quote John 3.16 right now because you've said it over and over and over and over and over. And you know that verse. Well, you can do that with other verses too. And this is a good verse. To, we call that engrafting it in your heart. Engraft it in your heart. Engrafted the word. All right. Anything you want to say before I pray with you? Thank you, Father, for this time we have together. Thank you for giving us this awesome verse. Thank you for recording what happened to Joshua in your word so we could read about it. Thank you for the way you used Moses and the way you raised up Joshua to follow him. And Lord, thank you for his example, because many times we feel like him. We feel overwhelmed. We feel like we don't know what to do. We feel like we cannot do what you expect us to do. Uh, and I'm sure these kids are going to feel that way sometimes. But Lord, help us to realize that we can be strong and we can be of a good courage. And we don't have to be afraid and we don't have to be dismayed about circumstances, no matter how bad they are. Because you, our God, our Father, our Lord. You're with us wherever we go. You're not going to leave us. And Lord, that's really good news for us. Thank you so much that you're with us all the time. You'll give us the strength we need. You'll give us the grace we need for the next day and, and the next day and the next day and the next day, one day at a time until you lead us through every trial, every difficulty. And finally, all of life. Now, Lord, right now, these kids need you to help them with this math. 
some of them need you to help them be disciplined enough to really study seriously and get ready for tests. Some of them need you to help them learn to memorize how to do these problems so they'll know what they're doing when they get to test time. Memorize their multiplication table so that when they get to test time, they won't be floundering. So, Lord, I pray you'd help them to take that seriously and to get serious about learning this stuff before their grades are falling through the floor. So help them, Lord, to take it seriously. I pray you'd help them to do well. The ones who have studied, the ones who have learned this material, help them to remember what they've learned. Help them uh, to uh, not make careless mistakes on this test and help them to do well for your glory. So bless them. Help us the rest of this day to live for you, to walk with you. Help us to be a blessing to others. Help us to remember your many, many blessings to us and give you thanksgiving and praise and glory, honor. Lord, you're an awesome father. You're awesome in every way. You're powerful. You're wise. You're loving. You're gracious and kind. Merciful. Lord, thank you. Thank you for being a wonderful father. We love you. Thank you for loving us. Most of all, we thank you for Jesus. We pray this prayer in his name. Amen. All right. Now, uh, I don't know if you have any questions or not based on the stuff you've studied, hopefully. Uh, I went over it in detail, but that doesn't help you pass tests. Usually, you, you've got to learn it yourself. You can't just stand, stare at what I've done. I gave you a handout to study. I gave you, you know, all that stuff. So now, if you don't do well, you can retake it. But guys, it's a bad habit to get into. Just say, well, I'll take potluck and see what happens. Because you got to make up a time and you got to finally, finally learn how to do this stuff. Okay, you do need scratch paper. If you don't have any, I've got some up here. So anybody need it? I would like for you to bring your own scratch paper, but but I'll certainly okay, just pass, get some, pass it around. You know, it's math class, so you need to bring paper and pencil. They're passing it around, so when it comes around, just uh, you need some. You okay? Obviously, you need to keep your eyes on your own paper. I would prefer you cover up your answers as you go, but just make sure you keep your eyes straight ahead on your own paper. So, did I give enough paper? Is there enough? You might need more paper. Okay. You have any other questions for me? Let me say one more thing about this. Just, just uh, put them on the. Just leave them, leave them right there at your place. I'll get them in just a minute. Just leave them on the table. Uh, guys, listen. A lot of students are used to teachers giving them hints on tests. They've had teachers before who give them hints. I don't do that. But if you want to ask me a question, it's okay to ask me. Sometimes I think, yeah, that's a legitimate question. Like, for example, on this test, I'm going to give you, it mentions the word dime, D-I-M-E. You know how many cents are in a dime? Ten. I, I realize students could get confused about that. So if you got confused about it, I'd be glad to tell you the 10 cents in a dime because that's not part of the question. That's not, I don't really, that's not what I'm testing you on. But if you say, what does this word mean that I'm testing you on, you know, then you need to be able to, you know, you need to know that. And I'll say, I'm sorry, I can't answer that because I'm. that's why I'm testing you. I'm saying, you know what that word means. You see what I'm saying? So there are words on there that you got to know what they mean. Uh, so sometimes I'll answer and sometimes I'll say, nope, that's what I'm testing you for. See if you know it. So you just need to learn it and do better next time. Okay, no other questions?